what's the deal with Mary Magdalene and Jesus? And why are there so many rumors about them being a couple? Hi, I'm, I'm Dan Stevens. I'm the youth pastor at Parkside Church in Chemist, Washington. So I'm making this video mostly for my students, but if you're not one of my students, that's fine. I want you to show this video to your friends, start a conversation, and ask some questions about the Bible. Show this to your parents, your youth pastor, or your senior pastor if you don't have a youth pastor. If you want, you can contact me on Twitter, at Daniel T. Stevens, or on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Daniel T. Stevens 1986. So the first thing about this question, at least somewhat recently, a few years ago, there was a movie and a book called The Da Vinci Code. And one of the points in that book, or the, the underlying theme of the book, this part of the story was that Jesus and Mary Magdalene had actually been married, and that the church had been trying to cover it up for all these years, and this was some big conspiracy, and that was what made the story. But it was just a fictional story. That's not what happened. And some rumors came out of that, that maybe that did happen. So let's, let's first, let's go to the Bible. If you're a Christian, the Bible is your ultimate authority anyway. But if you're not a Christian, the most credible biographical information that you can find about Jesus are in four books in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that are called the Gospels. Those are the four different perspectives, four different stories about Jesus' life from the perspectives of guys that were there or who did sort of a journalistic type of an interview. That was what Luke did. So what the Bible says, and I'll put references and notes underneath the video if you're watching this on YouTube or on the, the church website, parksidechurchcamus.org. What the Bible does say about Mary Magdalene is, one, that she was present when Jesus was crucified. She was present when he was buried, and she was one of the women that went to visit the tomb Sunday morning when Jesus had actually risen from the dead. The last thing that we find out about Mary, Mary Magdalene was that Jesus appeared to her first that Sunday morning. Doesn't tell us why, but the other little piece that it does say is that at some point during the course of Jesus and Mary Magdalene knowing each other was that Jesus had cast seven demons out of her. There's no purpose for why Jesus appeared to her first, and there's no further explanation about the, the exorcism, the casting out of seven demons. Doesn't tell anything else about that. So as far as what the Bible says, the only way that you can come to the conclusion that Jesus and Mary Magdalene were a couple is if you had that conclusion from the beginning. That's called a preconceived notion. The problem is you're not supposed to read the Bible with preconceived notions. The Bible is supposed to form preconceived notions. The Bible forms that filter that you filter everything through that you learn from other sources. At least for the Christian. If you're a non-Christian, you probably have some problems with that. So contact me and ask some questions. Was Another question that comes up is, was Mary Magdalene the woman caught in adultery in John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11? It's, it's possible, but I don't think that that was her for a few reasons. Number one, the Bible never explicitly identifies that woman who was caught in adultery, who Jesus saved her life because the Pharisees wanted to stone her to death. It doesn't ever specifically identify her, so we don't know who it was. It is possible that that woman was Mary Magdalene, but because John names her in other places, but not in that place, I don't think it was likely. And it would only be part of the story for John to say, yeah, he saved her life for, from the Pharisees, but then not to mention that he had also cast seven demons out of her. So I don't think that that was likely. It's possible, but not likely. Theologically speaking, that's a big word. It just means the study of God. So as far as how we understand God, it really wouldn't have been a problem if Jesus and Mary Magdalene had been married. Marriage is not a sin. Part of Christian doctrine is that Jesus never sinned. Marriage is actually a good thing. It's not a sin. However, practically speaking, it might have been problematic. And the reason being that the sole purpose that Jesus came was to die to pay for sin, was to raise from the dead to show that he beat sin, and to ascend back to heaven to show that he was God. So with that purpose in mind, it really wouldn't make sense to get married. That'd be putting that, that poor woman, that poor wife, through a lot of pain 
to then physically leave. So practically, that's, that would have been problematic if Jesus and Mary Magdalene had been married. Theologically, it wouldn't have been because marriage is not a sin. It's a good thing. Now, it's also possible, part of Christian belief is that Jesus was both fully God and fully man. So for the, the man, that human piece of Jesus, it's possible that Jesus was attracted to somebody, possibly Mary Magdalene, possibly somebody else, but the Bible never tells us that he was, so I don't think it happened. If he was attracted to Mary Magdalene, the Bible never tell, tells us that he acted on that attraction, so I don't think he did. Now, it's possible that Jesus was attracted just like it's possible to win the lottery. But I don't think it's probable because the Bible doesn't say that it happened. That's good enough for me. For a non-Christian, that might not be enough. Ask me more about that later. And even today, if you see a guy and a girl who are spending a lot of time together in public, even if they never spend time together in private, there are going to be rumors. But that's all that they are is rumors, not reality. And that's the case with Jesus and Mary Magdalene here, is there's rumors, there's not reality. So again, if you were one of my students, call me, text me, whatever. If you're not one of my students, feel free to find me on Twitter, at Daniel T. Stevens, or on Facebook, at facebook.com, forward slash Daniel T. Stevens, 1986. Ask your parents, ask your youth pastor, your senior pastor, and show this video to your friends and start a conversation about the Bible. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.